These are some of the most drama-filled moments on Ink Master. And to start things off, we're gonna cover a heated moment between two rivals that totally got out of hand. Now, in the very first episode of Season 5, things got extremely heated. This time around, this season was done a bit differently. Instead of doing the usual, they brought in rival contestants who already had beef to be cleared amongst them. Each of the contestants were waiting for an opportunity to get into an argument. In this episode, the contestants were put head to head with their rivals in a 6 hour challenge with no given theme. However, the twist was that the rivals had to tattoo the same canvas while tag teaming. This challenge proved to be just as chaotic as it sounds, with three groups getting called out for having the worst tattoo right from the get-go. As the elimination challenge was being explained to the contestants on the chopping block, the three rivals really seemed to be on edge. This was mainly due to how much money was on the line. The elimination challenge was all about assigning a style to another contestant in order to handicap them and take the win. With the second round underway, each tattoo artist was under tremendous pressure with rivals assigning styles that were out of their skill set. All of you had the worst tattoos of the day. Six of you are going to have one more chance to prove you have the essential skills. You must now face off against your rival. After the 4 hour elimination challenge, all the contestants gathered in a room as the judges took their time to critique each artist's work and decide who was going home. During this time, the artists were filled to the brim with anxiety and as a result, they began to argue with each other. As the artists continued to argue, LT, one of the eliminated contestants, boasted about how his tattoos were on the same level as the artists on the chopping block. This triggered a huge disagreement, causing everyone to throw fit against him. With LT talking trash about the other contestants, Ryan Eternal tried to make a point of him, but LT fired back with no consideration for Eternal's words. Things quickly escalated, and this is what ended up happening. Yeah! 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 yeah. What, what are we gonna do? Hey, I'm talking hey, to you! Hey, I'm hey, talking hey, to hey, you! Hey, 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 you don't know who the f I am! You don't know who the f I am! Oh. Thankfully, the two were pulled apart by the remaining contestants before cooling off for the final judgment. Well, that was a really close call. On the other hand, this next contestant got eliminated after what he did to a stupid, indecisive, and irrational canvas. The fourth episode of the second season didn't disappoint when it comes to drama as well. For the first challenge of this episode, the 12 remaining contestants of the season were asked to draw a specific design over the course of 90 minutes. The contestants split into two groups, with one group tattooing a lotus flower and water, while the other tattooed a skull with a top hat. Each artist did their very best, with the top two contenders of this challenge further battling it out to make it to the top spot. This challenge was so intense. With the first round out of the way, the worst performances were chosen to battle it out in the elimination challenge. While the challenge for the artist was to create a new school design, the canvases were bought out. Wondering what kind of drama is about to unfold here? Well, as the elimination contestants got ready to work it out with their canvases, Nick D'Angelo struggled to create a design that his canvas liked. This was mostly because the canvas kept contradicting her ideas over and over again. Litza, D'Angelo's canvas, gave him such a hard time that it left the poor artist confused. Although there was a lot of tension between the two, Litza was finally happy with one of the stencils he made and was ready to go ahead with it. After all the hard work, when D'Angelo finally revealed the back piece to Litza, she took some time and outright said, Litza was so unhappy that she immediately regretted giving creative control to D'Angelo. He had taken the liberty to add a few elements that Litza hadn't asked for, and she was pissed. The two of them parted ways, since retouching a freshly done tattoo isn't very wise. Because of all the miscommunication and a really unhappy canvas, D'Angelo was eliminated from the show. However, they were called back for a redemption tattoo without the pressure of the competition to mend the past. But things didn't go as planned. Litza was so bothered by him that she didn't know how to clearly communicate it. When D'Angelo tried to poke fun at her, she said this. It's not expecting this. I'm a little shocked. Am I someone you would even get a tattoo by right now? I don't even know if I want to do it. We're not sure if D'Angelo screwed up on purpose or not, but this next canvas asked for a portrait of an elephant but ended up getting this. In the fourth episode of the third season, the canvases and their artists were offered an opportunity to redeem any poorly made tattoos. The artist under critique for this entry is Julia Carson. Check out what the canvas thought about her tattoo. Look. I end up with a tattoo that looks like a leg in my arm. Everybody loved it. When I posted on Instagram, I got over Did they see a heel? Like, Do you really think this is a good tattoo? Yeah. So right now you're here based on bull and a lie. Corson was given a chance to redo her botched work on not one, not two, but three canvases that were unhappy with her poor skills. A third strike usually means you're out, but was there any hope for Carson? Let's find out. Camilla, one of her canvases, wanted to voice her displeasure over her tattoo, but Carson was so confident in her skills that she wasn't ready to accept any criticism. Carson's first canvas was already having a tough time dealing with her, but things got even more heated when Camilla entered the room. As the argument pushed on between the canvases and Carson, check out what happened next. Julia, you're a fake ass bitch. 
Oh, the candy ass. Yeah, the candy ass. Yes, it smelled like diarrhea the whole time. A third unhappy canvas was let loose into the chaos. It was now a 3v1 situation. The third canvas came in strong with her words, calling out Carson's inexperience in tattooing dark-skinned individuals. Even with three people on the opposing side, Carson wasn't budging and stuck to her opinion, refusing to address the canvas's concerns. The argument got so intense that the host Dave Navarro stepped in to defuse the situation. With Carson's attitude being an integral part of her redemption, things didn't work out between the artists and the canvases. While Camilla left without having her tattoo fixed, she vowed to never work with Carson ever again. We understand that tattoo artists take pride in their work, but this one lost her pride because of her ego. Well, that was pretty intense. But here's another example of how things can go from 0 to 100 very quickly. In the ninth episode of the fourth season, the contestants were asked to design a piece of warrior art. The rules to this challenge were quite simple. The work had to be entirely original and have no connection to the existing one. Did everyone measure up to the challenge? Well, as the competition was underway, each of the artists gave it their all and tried their very best to move forward into the competition. With the round nearing its conclusion, Jay Blondel was wary of Scott Marshall's work and led an investigation into it. If you're wondering what dirt he was going to dig up, then we're here to reveal just that. So he's just tracing stuff. He's taking images and passing them off as his own. What an ass. With the artists waiting for their judgment, Blundell was back with evidence of foul play. Blundell was convinced that Marshall's work wasn't original. To prove this, he brought pictures of statues that he believed Marshall had copied from. He also brought this to the attention of two other participants who agreed with his assumption but were way too afraid to take action themselves. They feared that this could either go well with Blundell making a relevant point, or badly by him making a fool of himself. But this was a risk that Blundell had to face alone, and guess what? He wasn't wrong. Following this intense discussion, it was time to judge the contestants. Surprisingly enough, the first to be called out was Marshall. The judges did give a fair critique of Marshall's work and sent him right back into the lineup. After that came Blundell, whose work was critiqued pretty harshly, but how did he get back at them? Blondel tried to divert the judge's attention towards Marshall's work. He threw Marshall under the bus, to which Marshall claimed that he simply used the pictures as a reference. It was shocking to see the judges shut down this speculation by supporting Marshall's statement, and this led to a bout of verbal abuse between Blondel and Marshall. Blondel was left unheard and disappointed with the judges favoring Marshall. However, none of the works presented by the artists were considered worthy of the show. There was even a public outcry, with many fans questioning the integrity of the competition. Do you think this was just a blatant case of favoritism? Or was it all a ploy for Blondel to bring down Marshall? While you make your judgment, let's head on to this next moment which is deemed to be the most intense moment in Ink Master history. We're talking about an artist who shoved and attacked Nunez. In the 8th episode of the 4th season, contestants fought for a place in the grand finale. The episode kicked off with a gathering of the contestants who were talking about the previous episode's elimination. This was when Jay Blondel, who had a close call on the chopping block the previous round, told Kyle Dunbar something juicy about Chris Nunez. Essentially, he told him that Nunez believed that he should have been eliminated on that day as well. Dunbar obviously wasn't pleased with Nunez's comment and was already in attack mode before entering the flash challenge for this episode. The tension in the air was palpable when Dunbar stared down Nunez, who was taken aback by this strange occurrence. But before we reveal what happened next, be sure to drop a massive like down below if you enjoyed the video so far, and subscribe to our channel for more. It's free, so why not just do it? Anyway, let's get into the best part of this video. Things took a turn for the worst when Dunbar started to throw insults at Nunez, who replied back with the same tenacity. There came a point when Dunbar had had enough and stepped up his game by directly shoving Nunez. This caused the entire crew to get involved before Nunez called Dunbar out for a fight. Things weren't looking too pretty at this point for either of them. Dunbar, who was still riled up, was screaming at the remaining judges as Nunez cooled off and stepped back into the frame. Dunbar was relentless in his attempts to fight Nunez, even after the latter refused to fight Dunbar over something so trivial. Finally, the tension dissolved only when the two were separated and the security team talked some sense into Dunbar. Seems like Dunbar got in way over his head. So, do you remember any other intense moments on the show? Let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, guys.